So suppose you're a very friendly person and you create a P element with the content hello. How does your browser display it on the screen? Well, it turns out that every HTML element, including this one, is considered a box. And boxes consist of four things. First, the content, hello in this case. Second, a border. Third, some padding between the content and the border. And finally, a margin that's on the other side of the border and allows you to impose a gap between this and other elements. Understanding and knowing how to manipulate this box model is truly the key to creating fancy pants layouts for your websites. So we have a simple example today to study the box model with. It's a very simple HTML page. It just has a header and a paragraph. It has a limited amount of styling. Uh, I've applied a nice font and I've chosen a luminous pink for the header using the RGB components I took from a color picker. So thinking back to the box model, what I'd like to do is be able to apply a border to some elements. So I'm going to create a new class here called box and I'm going to use some properties to style it with a width of two pixels. I'm going to make it solid and I'm going to make the color black. Next, I'm going to add box to the class attributes of the header and the paragraph. And now you can see that we have boxes. Now, rather than adding borders around these existing elements, what I'd like to do is add some nicely styled colored boxes underneath them. And I'm going to do this using an HTML tag called div. Now, div is essentially an element for content division. The idea is it allows you to group different elements together and style them together as one unit. So here we've created three divisions, one containing some text, one containing a list, and one containing another div element. But because we haven't applied any styling yet, you can't see any styling on the page. You only see line breaks between these blocks. So we can use our box class to style these div elements. We simply add box to the class attributes of each of them and then you'll see the border appear. But note that there's no padding and note that there's no margin at this time. By default, they have a size of zero pixels. Also note that you can change the style of the border. You can make it dashed if you want, but I don't want. Um, and you can also specify all of this stuff in a shorthand. So instead of writing border width, border style, border color, you could just write border, two pixels, solid, black, and you'll get the same effect. Now, let me modify this box class just a little bit further. I'd like to add some padding that's on the inside of the border, and I'd like to add a margin that's on the outside of the border. Next, I'm going to use the background color property to color everything in within the border. I'm going to make my boxes a nice bumblebee yellow. Now, this is all well and good, but actually the box class is no longer very reusable because it means that every single box is going to be yellow. So instead of having background color yellow here, what I'd like to do is create a new class uh, with that property inside and then have another class that allows me to assign a background color of green. And then what I want to do is assign these to the div elements by using this trick of specifying multiple classes. So let's have a go. What a lovely box that is. I'm just gonna show you a couple more tricks. Um, first, I want to show you the border radius property that allows us to make uh, the corners nice and rounded. So here we have to specify a value. I'm going to specify 200 pixels and see what I get. Finally, I want to change the size of this uh, green box by a little bit. Since I only want to do it to this particular box, I'm not going to alter the style sheet but rather I'm going to add what's called an inline style uh, to the relevant div element. So first I'm going to specify that its width should be 50% of the space that's available to it. What this means is that if I change the size of the window, the size of the box also changes with it. 
This is opposed to an absolute measurement, such as 50 pixels, uh, which is fixed and doesn't change as I change the window. I'm going to stick with the 50% width because this is better for my users who come on a small screen, such as a mobile phone. And that's about it for this video. We introduced the CSS box model. We talked about how to style the borders, padding, margins around elements and their background colors. We introduced the div tag and showed how we can use it to group content together and style it as one unit. Uh, we briefly looked at how to write some inline CSS. And finally, we briefly talked about relative and absolute width. See you next time.